Good afternoon, nerd fam, and welcome back to Salt Lake City, Utah. We are coming to the end of day one of our three days of coverage here on the Cube at KubeCon North America. My name is Savannah Peterson with my fabulous co-pilot on this rocket ship, Rob Streche. Rob, what a cool crop of humans we've this, gotten to interact with today. I was going to say, the community continues to grow. Uh, some people we've known from many different places coming back. I know. Uh, you know and I think it's just that kind of sense of community that's been here in how people have embraced Kubernetes that really is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You and I couldn't even eat lunch. We had so many friends coming up to it say was, hi. That was kind oh, of right. annoying, right. but cool. that speaking was of, fun and annoying at the same time. Speaking of friends, <laughs> cool people, and an absolute cube OG, Betty, thank you so much for coming to hang out with Hello. us today. Hello, thank you for having me. So happy to be here. Yeah. It is such a joy to always have you around. I, when I saw you on the schedule, I got excited. I thought, what a perfect afternoon. I don't need a coffee, we've got a Betty. <laughs> so I am. I love it. I am, I am super grateful for that. How's your week going so far? I mean, is it really only day one? Yeah, I, right? I know. I know, I just I got in yesterday. Feeling. Yeah. So I'm like uh, already exhausted. I yeah. um, feel like we've done a ton of stuff. Uh, like you say, um, you know, running into so many people you know, it's like walked in and within two seconds of trying to get my badge, ran into five or six people. The logos change, but we're all the same humans, interested in the same stuff. Um, love, to, love seeing how this community and kind of ecosystem has grown over time. You know, you you absolutely nailed it too. The logos do change, and sometimes I have to kind of triple check. Oh, where are you now? Oh, cool. You know. But speaking of, you've had a big career change recently. How are things going? Yeah. So uh, I just hit my 90 days. I joined Heroku uh, from Salesforce. Very very exciting. Um, and I'm sure you know Heroku's been around for a long time. Kind of captured the imagination of developer experience back in the day. Um, we are, you know, with my joining, um, we've been doing a lot of work there. Um, so really excited that we um, are spending more time with the CNCF, um, working with the Kubernetes community, um, as well as like open telemetry, cloud native build packs. So doing a lot of stuff there. Um, and you'll be seeing us around a lot more at events like this, reInvent. A lot of places you guys will be. Yeah. Ooh, that's well, interesting. Well, I, I think it's been great because we got to talk to you, you know, at Dreamforce. And, you know, again, it's really great to see where you're leaning into Kubernetes. And I, I think, you know, we've both been like you said, all three of us have been around the block with this, and it's it is about the community, and you know, you're, you're here for the first time sponsoring, and you're yeah. really leaning into this. What are some of the other things that are going on? Yeah, so um, you know, earlier this um, I want to say earlier this week, but it was just yesterday. Um, <laughs> well, both are true. I know. <laughs> yes, both are both things are true at the same time. Um, we open sourced uh, the Twelve Factor app. And I know you all have Gail on, Gail Frederick on later, um, and so she's going to talk much more about that, but that's one of the things that kind of defined Heroku in the early days, like what's a great way to build scalable, resilient apps um, for the cloud when cloud was still new? And so now what we're doing is we're looking at that again and looking at that in the context of Kubernetes and this whole ecosystem with containers, and what does that mean to do that in a, with a platform point of view? Um, we love this ecosystem, we love this community, but we all know that it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different parts. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of customers, like that's complicated. And so our mission is to make that really simple and easy for them. Yeah. That seems to be the, the theme and the objective of everyone in, in, in this world in particular, Kubernetes being a, a fantastic tool, not known for its simplicity. Yeah. Powerful, yes. but could be complicated, yes. Yeah. Yes, and especially with AI and everything else that's going on. Why? It's, you mentioned that your presence is going to be expanding at events and things like this moving forward. Why now? Is it the intersection of Kubernetes, AI? Um, you know, what I've seen just uh, kind of in my last couple of years in this is that one, it's a return to, return to platform perspectives versus parts. Mm -hmm. One of the big reasons why I joined Heroku, um, because I saw the investments that we were making from a product standpoint, um, you know, replatforming to Kubernetes, looking at some of these open source things, but doing it in a way that um, with the philosophies that people have loved about Heroku. Like Kubernetes is fantastic, but you know what? We'll take care of all the complicated stuff um, so you get the benefits of it without having to like adjust all the knobs yourself kind of thing. So with that means we'll show up at a lot more events like a KubeCon, you'll see us at developer conferences, you'll see us at the cloud builder type of shows. So yeah, going back and you know, reaching our people. Which I, I think again, coming out of Dreamforce, what I was impressed by, and like you said, Salesforce has always been about making it easy and I think a big piece of it has been how do you really have that platform? Obviously, there's a lot of 
technical stuff underneath the platform of Salesforce itself, and there's a lot of AI being built. So are you seeing and gaining perspective on how you can build a better platform for people by seeing how Salesforce mm -hmm. is actually building their platform out? Oh, that is a great question, because I also, also often get, oh, Heroku's owned by Salesforce? Like, make that make sense. Um, and I think that uh, philosophically, it's, there's a lot of similarities. Like, you don't, you don't build your own uh, you know, CRM anymore, right? You, what you do is you buy best of breed app, that's really what Salesforce is, and it's you know, giving workflows that are really great for the business analyst. Um, Heroku's philosophy is like, hey, you know what? Um, the undifferentiated heavy lifting for a lot of people is building your platform. You should spend the time building your business, building your app. And so I think that's where we really share a lot of that same philosophy. And together, and the integrations that we provide, we unlock a ton of capabilities for all the creators, bringing business analysts, like you know, sales ops, marketing ops people, together with developers to you know, build the best workflows and automations that they need for their customers and their business. Yeah, I mean, and you talked about the replatforming, and we had touched on it uh -huh. at, at Dreamforce. Why don't you go a little bit more into that? Because I thought that was, I mean, it, it caught me by surprise at mm -hmm. Dreamforce, which in a positive way. Yeah. So uh, help us understand that so people understand. Um, so if you go back to when Heroku was started, it was before Docker. It was mm -hmm. before Kubernetes. Heroku's an OG. Super OG. So, yeah. you know, we, we're using uh, you know, LXC, right? And we built a lot of this stuff ourselves because we had to at that time, right? Necessity is the mother of all invention. Um, and if you look at where we are today, it's that same principle of like this huge community building and contributing and um, innovating on Kubernetes. And you know, why should we spend the time to build that? Why don't we just participate in that and also yeah. use that in the platform? So then it's, it's kind of like, you know, we're applying the same philo the philosophy that we have for our customers for ourselves as well. And you're not reinventing the wheel every time you want to build something new. We don't need to do that anymore, no. right? No, yeah. and nobody needs to. Your customers exactly. don't. I mean, I think that's one of the cool things about this whole ecosystem is the way that everybody collaborates, best mm -hmm. agreed, and then everything's open source and you can go use it and do something awesome. Speaking of customers, now that you're in your first 90 days, are there any really interesting customer stories that you can share with us that you've learned since you joined? Yeah, so um, because we're um, part of the Salesforce family, what's interesting is um, there are a whole bunch of customers like Lamborghini, Workday, that are are big Salesforce cloud customers, so they're using CRM, you know, a sales cloud, marketing cloud, CPQ, all those tools, and then they use Heroku adjacent to that, so that they can further customize what they're doing um, within those clouds, so we're a great complementary story. Again, it's the same thing of like custom code, offloaded compute, complex ca calculations and things, they can use that together, so those are some great um, examples. Lamborghini, did you know it takes two years from when someone orders a car to when they get it? So what they've built using, um, using Heroku and Salesforce is this like mobile app with like a backend experience and such that kind of basically curates that customer throughout those entire two years. Yeah. So you get updates from the factory floor when your car is being built and then you can pick a color. Right. And then when it's done, like literally, like I think it's like the CEO is like, hey, films a video and it's sent to your phone. Like, well, here's your new car. Like, that's a fascinating, wonderful customer Yeah, that experience. just kind of gave me chills. <laughs> I love that. I mean, yeah. we're talking about luxury automotive, but I, but I think that's, <laughs> which doesn't always give me chills. <laughs> <laughs> I like the effect that it did. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, but, but, but that community is, what is, is my core. I'm all about putting the human in tech, and that's really compelling because you've got an interesting, I mean, it, I waited two years for my tattoo artist, shout out to Deanna. Amazing. And, and it was so worth it because I knew I wanted it to be her. Just right. Exactly, yeah. and, and, I, and I knew that that was someone I could trust with this long-lasting piece of art. You're investing a lot in a vehicle if you're purchasing a Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And and two years is a long cliff. Very, to wait when yeah. you order something, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're all living in an Amazon so era I don't, where it I don't, shows up in an hour. I've never, you know? I've never no bought a Lambo. There's no delivery on a Lambo. <laughs> I, know. Well, I was going to say, I've never bought Lambo a Lambo, Prime. but I know somebody who did, and to your point, when, they, when it was, before it went into the paint shop, it notified him. Yeah. So, and this is like, last call if you want to change the color of the exactly. car and stuff like that. And we yeah. were talking about paint shops just a couple weeks ago with cars, and it were, it's with just the amount of tech that goes into that as yep. well, and all of the IoT stuff out there as well. You have to be, I mean, again, Salesforce is just, with, especially with the cloud and with data cloud and things that are going on and how you can bring your data there and you tie it up with mm -hmm. the stuff that's already, it's so trusted from that. I, I mean, I guess that would seem to, you probably get some of that transference off to Heroku when they're like, hey, 
it's a trusted platform. We totally. know that this is, and this is how it's built. So yeah. is that what you've been seeing as well? So we have a phrase of um, being inside the Salesforce trust layer, and so that has meaning for the Salesforce customer. So as being part of that family, like this platform, this PaaS, where you can do all your custom code, custom actions in any language, um, and offload compute for complex things, um, that's all in that trust layer. So that definitely has meaning there. Um, and then, you know, we have a whole bunch of customers that start on Heroku before they even buy CRM too, so. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that, kind of yeah. chicken and egg and how the cross-pollination goes like that. Yeah, so, um, you know, we because we've um, always had like a strong pull with developer first, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of like companies that start building their first, their product on Heroku. So they may be like a startup and they grow with us and then eventually then, they're, then they need to go buy their CRM. So we've seen it on both sides. And, oh, what, yeah, and cool. again, I think what's neat is that you're also investing back in the community to, to Savannah's point here with the community. Uh, you chose Otel, for instance. I mean, observability is a big thing and being able to manage that. Why, mm -hmm. why, why Otel, I guess you'd say? Well, it's also the kind of ecosystem that Otel brings with it, so we wanted to have that as part of our platform and there's a lot of thing capabilities we can have, not you know, beyond just the drains and such. And so this is just the beginning of integrating that into the platform and our, um, our product team really has kind of a, a robust roadmap on how this could, one, beef up what we're doing on observability and metrics and all that within Heroku itself, but then how that means we can have our, our ecosystem of add-on partners work with our platform too. So, exciting. There's a lot of excitement and lots of, lots of possibilities. It is really exciting. I was just thinking about the massive scale of Salesforce too and all the conversations you can have. What do you wish people knew about Heroku that maybe they don't today? Oh, you know what? I think um, Heroku is a platform for both developers and operators. Mm. Um, I think people largely think that it's a developer tool. Um, but in this day and age, we know there's just not enough people that are really skilled at SRE, platform engineering, all of these things. Um, so I want them to also know that we're a, great, um, we're a great platform for operations as well, so that we can help scale what they do um, in supporting their developers and supporting their business teams. Are you, yeah. are you seeing a pattern in workloads that is coming to Heroku? I mean, like you said, hmm, yeah. it would seem that the ties with the CRM data and things of that nature because of the cloud and... You know, we see a big mix. Sense. We yeah. see a big mix, a lot of like front end experiences as well as a lot of back end services. A fair amount of data because of our integration with Salesforce. Um, we, um, you know, we have uh, we have a managed Postgres service, and so there's a lot of data syncing that happens, um, and then people are able to uh, manipulate that data within Heroku, and then and then um, have that initiate different actions in their software. Are there any projects, you've been in this world for a long time, so I love your just general community pulse. Are there any projects or exciting things going on here in the room that you're particularly keen to learn more about or excited to see how it evolves? Oh, I mean, I have not even done all of my full walk yeah. through here. Um, so um, I just cruised the project pavilion earlier today and there's a whole bunch of names that I haven't even seen That's before. That's what I was kind of driving I at. Because I, I had the same experience when I did a 10 minute drive by earlier today. I know, and I haven't, had, I'll be honest, I haven't had a chance to go up and talk to some of those folks yet. But it's great to see some of the progress um, that some of the projects like, you know, Linkerd and some of those other folks have had. Um, some great successes on what can be possible with sustainable um, open source and business. Um, but I'm, I'm excited to go back and take another look because the names I hadn't heard of, I mean, I've only missed two KubeCon events. Like no. what, what happened? It's un <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. The yeah. amount of AI related stuff, yeah. this has been insane. I didn't get it out of, the, the problem with day zero is there was five different places I wanted to be at the same time. <laughs> right, could there's not so be much there. going on. But I, I totally I agree. The, the atmosphere has been fantastic. And I think also, to your point, you missed two, but you can look at it and go, there, over 50% of the people who were in the keynote this morning are new to Kubernetes that or new amazing. to KubeCon, so it's their first and KubeCon. And that's every KubeCon. So, yeah. so they're so cool. They didn't know you weren't here. <laughs> so I know. That's, it's amazing that you can get you can get there and be it's part amazing. of that. Yeah. It's, Just thinking that it's been around for 10 years. Yeah. It's as big as it is. We have as many users as we do all over, but there's still half of the attendees every time are new. So there's there's still so much more to do here as a as a larger group. Yeah. And it's and and for anyone thinking about joining this community or or diving in, 
there's a lot of new people. Just because we're a bunch of OGs doesn't mean it doesn't mean that there's not room room for everybody. And I think I think that really matters. All right, I have a very important question for you. Yes, ma'am. Because we're obviously going to have you back on next KubeCon, hopefully. As well, you'll be there. You'll be at reInvent. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. But what do you hope you can say when we hang out in London that you can't yet say today? Oh my goodness. What do I want people to say? I want people to feel that they are getting meaningful value from this. Because I think there is, because of the way that this has grown so fast, I think sometimes people feel like it's, and you see it in the survey, uh, the, some of the, the, the gaps on skills and the complexity feel like they can't, they feel like it's keeping them, holding them back from getting started. I would like people to feel like it's more accessible and reachable, like accessible for them. And they're able to get ROI either personally or as a team um, faster. I love that, I'm here for that. Time to value quicker and, and, and less sensation of feeling overwhelmed, mm -hmm. honestly. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a really good point. Yeah, we got enough going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Preach this, that, yes. is, that is for sure. Let's have some goodness. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Thankfully KubeCon's full of goodness. Yes. I, do, I, I do feel like that. It, that is a vibe. Betty, you're just an awesome human. Thank you so much Thank for taking you. the time. Thanks for coming on. And congrats again on the new job. Thank you. We'll have to get you um, all some purple swag. Yes, absolutely, my Sounds favorite good. color. I'm all for it. Rob, always a joy to hang out with you. Always awesome. It, it was awesome. It'll continue to be awesome. Yes. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fabulous three days of coverage here on theCUBE. We're at KubeCon North America in Salt Lake City, Utah. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.